Blow it up, sister. Just, hey. just blow it up. <laughs> we need some heat. <laughs> came from the car. My toes are toasty now. <laughs> Oh, Father, we just thank you right now, God, and we just say, have your way. As I sat in the tent today, I, I asked the Lord, what would you have me say? Because I am a prophetic messenger. I pick up what's in the atmosphere and I release that message. We'll start off with 1 Corinthians, and we'll say that my speech and preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and the power. So I asked the Lord, where are we going? He said, John 12. John 12, verse 23. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. <coughs> truly, I, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in the world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. Where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Second Corinthians chapter four. The first scripture says that the grain must fall into the ground but it must die. We have many seeds. All our words are spoken seeds. Every word we speak is a seed. The Bible talks and says that when we spill the seeds, that we must trust that the Lord waters them. First Corinthians chapter four. So therefore, since we have this ministry, through the mercy we have received, we do not lose heart. He started off this first verse with do not lose heart. It's funny how we first start off in ministry and we're on fire for God. It's called the first love. Then years go by and you notice that the seeds that we're planting are no longer bringing much fruit as they did when we were on fire for the Lord. So what happens? First uh, Second Corinthians chapter four says, and so therefore, since we have this ministry through the mercy we received, we do not lose heart. It says the ministry through the mercy, ministry through the mercy. See what happens is we become so self-righteous and the self-righteousness takes place and we forget about the mercy of God. Amen. See, mercy, when God speaks about mercy, he says that mercy triumphs over judgment. Come on now. Amen. Amen. I'm going to get somewhere tonight with this. Because as we prayed earlier, as all the words came forth, we all can hear what God is saying. Tradition must die. Love must rise. The light of Christ must be in our face. We're all looking for a movement of God. We all want the Holy Spirit to show up like never before. We pray and we ask the Pentecost to fall on us. And we pursue that, but with our hearts are not right. We're in ministry, yes. I am a minister, but unto the Lord first before I am to the people. It says that the ministry came from the mercy of God. And we often say that we're all serving God. But yet we find ourselves in a position of self-righteousness. And that's where tradition comes in. Mm -hmm. And then we lose the mercy of God. And we become judgmental people. Judging the very people of God with the hearts of a human and not the hearts of God. We want a movement of God, but we need a pure heart. We need a pure heart. Our heart cannot be found unrighteous at all. There has to be a pure stream. The Bible talks about an inner flow of a living water that flows to us. So what stream is flowing out of the inner being of your soul? We are ministers.
to God. See, I'm not speaking to the people tonight because we are the ones held responsible for the move of God. When the outpouring came, someone had to be found hungry. Someone had to be found desperate. Someone was tired of tradition and realized that their self-righteousness wasn't bringing the anointing that they needed to break the yoke of the unbeliever. So they get on the altar and they say, God, if you don't show up, ministry is done. See, that's what God is looking for. Humility. Humility is the only key that's going to unlock this movement of God. I had a dream years ago before I even understood the kingdom. I came in before the courtrooms of heaven I was bare naked. Was unashamed that I'm standing before people naked. Because see, when you come before God, he sees you as you are. I cannot hide who I am. My faults, my darkness, all those things stand before God. Even my self-righteousness cannot clear that up. I come into the courtroom of heaven. And I did not know, but I was a, there was a fear of the Lord in me. And I said, I'm getting ready to be judged. A whisper. Get low. Get low. So I get down to the very ground and I military style up to the to the judges. These judges were the elders of the courtroom. And I stand before them and there's this amazing white light above them and their crowns are significant. I had no idea where I was until later on studying the word, I found myself in the court of heaven, getting ready to be just, see, there was something that needed to be broken. And the only way to be broken is by being humbled. Amen. Amen. It's not me. Hallelujah. I can't save anyone. I couldn't even save myself. Amen. I can't, I, we, we can stand here all night, but if God doesn't show up, no one in this city will come. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. I'm starving. I've been to too many churches where it's dead. Too many places, conferences, the spirit is not moving. Let's not fool ourselves. I, God cannot be fooled. We cannot manipulate something that's not happening. We can't. My spirit will tell me when God is in the room. And I'll lead into that. But if I do not feel the spirit moving, then you can forget about me engaging. Because God is not present. I will not waste my time in this season coming where God is not there. And that's why 2020 moves. Do not waste your time in this upcoming season. If God is not there, I have eternity to be answered to. This is temporary. I have to answer to him when I am done here. About the works that he has given me to steward. We have failed in our leadership for years now. Amen. This is not new. I've been hearing often in the past week, we've been waiting 40, 60, 80 years for God to show up. What? I thought this was just my generation. You're telling me you've been waiting longer than me? Something is wrong. Something is wrong. <laughs> the gospel says that we preach the word of God and it should be demonstrated with the power of the spirit. Amen. Yes. What gospel are we preaching? 
Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Say it. What gospel is being taught? How watered down is it really? How far have we fed this to the people of God? We are responsible. And thank God for repentance. Because repentance, it's available even now. If you found yourself in a position where you were in leadership and you feel that there's something not right. See, God knows you and he knows everyone else. And I'm not worried about your leadership. I'm worried about me and where I am with God. When I preach your word, Lord, I need to see the power of the Spirit of God again. What this all tells me is that something has not died. See, we started off where it says the seed must fall into the ground or unless it'll be alone. Because it hasn't died. See, when you don't die, you are doing this on your own. Hey! Come on! Come on! Then it says if you die, you will bear much fruit. So you, you're, what God is saying is very easy. Die already. Do away with the desires that are not even fit for his kingdom. Enough of the, I can't be holy because I got all these issues and God knows me. And there goes his grace. His grace is to bring change, not to keep you the same. We, as leaders, have failed. Come on! My God. I'm going to include myself in there because you know what? There's times I could have done better. Yes. I could have fasted more. I could have prayed more. I could have travailed more. Whatever it took. Well, the times that God wooed me into his anointing, into his presence. And I said, just not right now, God. You know, i got to get this project done. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, not right now, God. Because if I don't do this, Because they're not willing. The kids are hungry. 
unconditional. She believes in a God that I don't feel. When is that going to stop? Something has to die right now, today, because the next year you cannot take this with you. We won't see it. I tell you what, God will show up because he's God. But you might miss it. You might miss it because you can't even tell when he shows up anymore. Wow. You forgot what it really felt like. So when God shows up, it might seem like strange fire to you. Strange. Strange. Don't know you. I don't know how often I have to keep repeating you better here and know that you have to know your master's voice. Because when a real move rises up, a, a false move rises up with it. Yes, yes it does. That's right. Yeah. Whoa. And the last thing we need to know is that you follow a voice that wasn't the creator. Wow. 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 A lot of leaders will lead that way. That's it. And it is what it is. If we don't preach the truth, if we don't pound the real truth of the word back into the body, we are going to see many straight. Matthew says the time will come where their hearts will grow cold and many will stray from the faith. Why? Because this is the very moment where faith is not producing anything. Because faith is not present. Faith is not present. We got to repent. We went six months homeless. Come on, come on, tell us. I'll tell you my testimony. Come on, then. Six months homeless. No one knew a thing. I preached. I served. We prayed, we seeked, we knocked, we kept going, we trusted God in every ounce of the way. There were seven of us with our kids. God provided every day and night, every day and night. We slept in the hotels, kids still were going to school, everything, nothing changed. Because I believed he was doing something. And he did. He said, I'm taking you through the gate where it's narrow. Many don't go this way because they want to bring their baggage. And they come up in here and they keep trying to come in with all their baggage and you don't fit. Yes. Yes. Narrow game you cannot take. You can't take your pleasures. I can't take my comfort. Guess what I can't take? My bed, my pillow, everything stays behind. We're all uncomfortable in a 300 square room for six months. Lord, what are you doing? You forgot about my least of these. Very first thing he said, you forgot about the least of these. See, because we get so self-righteous. Oh. We get so holier than thou. We forget about the Lisa C. Well, for, you even forget where you came from. Six months of peering us down. I couldn't wear my best shoes. I couldn't wear my best clothes. I had to particularly have a set bag. That's it. One bag. One bag. That's it. You gonna minister? You gonna minister with those clothes? Whatever's in that bag, wash them. You learn to simplify your life, and you start to realize all this stuff was created for my pleasure. And in reality, I don't really need all of it. All I needed was the presence of God, and everything that was in there—all these pleasures were gone, and they had to die, and I had to bury them so that I could bear fruit. I wasn't bearing fruit with the pleasures. Come on. Oh, but I want a house. I want a car. Don't I deserve it? No, stop. You're in self-entitlement. You're not entitled to nothing. Come on. Oh, but are we part of the kingdom? Seek him first. Come on. Seek him first. If he feels like blessing you, he will. Seek him first. If he feels like you need a car, he'll give it. But don't let that be the one thing your heart starts seeking. God knew the very desires of my heart. I wouldn't even buy a cup so that I did not misspend my money because I was scared to not store 
but he brought the cup for free. He gave it to someone else to give it to me. That's just an example of something so minor, a desire. Yes. Oh, God. If I would just be faithful. Stop wanting the things of this world. Stop. Because in heaven, it's not going to be needed. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to be mad. I'm never going to have to have a comfort. I'm going to be there and worship 24 7. You got a problem worshiping now? Then you're not making it in heaven. Because it's 24 7. Get uncomfortable now. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Serve us, Lord. Yes. Oh, break us. We forgot what it felt like to be broken. Because we're so, God's so good in our, in our even in our self-righteousness. He, he just, he's, he's so good. Oh, my God. You just keep giving. Even in my self-righteousness. My God. You even help feed my grief. Because his mercy. See how good he is. It's his mercy. I don't want I don't listen, grace is nothing compared to mercy. It's his mercy that saves me off my sick bed. It's not God's grace, it's his mercy. Understand that his mercy is beyond the view of ocean floors. Just looking at that, it just you can never comprehend the goodness of God. I'm wicked, and you still showed up. Yes. yes. My God. In my disgustingness, you saved yes. me. Yes. Nobody knew the darkness I'm walking through, and you came in with some light yes. to brighten up my path so that I will not stray from where I'm supposed to be. My God. What happened? What will make us think that he's not the God like this for anyone else? It's impossible for him to do it for me and not do it for someone else. Sometimes we're like, that's just too much work. That person needs too much work. Too much deliverance. Guess what? They said the same thing about me. The same thing about me. They cast me out from lack of understanding. But God. But God. Listen, if it wasn't for God, if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit of God who taught me, who led me, who delivered me, who sanctified me, who broke me, who redeemed me, Holy Spirit. I'm sorry, people say, oh, Holy Spirit doesn't work. The Holy Spirit works that way. I'll prove it to you. Come look at my notebooks. Taught by the Holy Spirit because the pastors lacked understanding. The, the brothers lacked understanding because the pastors lacked understanding. Let's not get too deep, sister. Oh, okay. Because the Bible said deep calls out to deep. He's calling out to the deep parts of me. You know, the very inner deep part that keeps, that my husband don't know about. The deep parts that my kids don't know about. The very part that I sit there, God is the only one that knows about it. Me and you, Lord, you know the deep parts of me. You know the very things I struggle with. Make a contract hard before me, God. Purify. God knows. God knows you don't tell everything to everybody. You don't tell every, I don't want to hear it. You don't tell everybody that your thoughts. You know the strongholds that need to be casted down. Why? Why? Can you help me in my stronghold and how to cast it down? No, because strongholds can only be casted down between you and God. Or I can do a whole inner healing class. But if you do not take ownership of your own wickedness, then no one else can do it. Holiness. 
which when you know in Genesis it says that I made them in my image and then the Bible says you are to be holy yes. holy 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 we get this whole thing and it's just twisted see I need the Holy Spirit yes yes we do oh I, every day every day Every day, every day, because see, my character needs to be in line with God. Amen. My speech needs to be in line with God. My thoughts need to be in line with God. See, this, this salvation is a process of working it through. It's not just that I'm saved. No, I am saved through the process of my salvation. That means I'm still connected to the Father in a relationship basis. It's just not me saying a prayer. No, no, no. You see, the prayer don't save them. The Bible says if they confess that they believe. And if you don't believe and you're just confessing, then you haven't really been saved. Oh. A broken, broken vow that we tell people. Just say this prayer. Yeah. I've seen people say that prayer and never come back to the altar. I see false repentance happen every day. Yeah, you're convicted for a minute, but you go back to do the same thing. False salvation. Hallelujah. Oh, but you're saved. They think they're saved. Hallelujah. They're not saved. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, they're not saved. See, when you're saved, things change. No. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. It's evident. Work it. Things change. Work right there. I don't right feel there. like doing the things I used to. Right things there. change. Yes. An encounter with God changes me. Right there, right there. Oh. I have to be changed. My God. And you start to look at the things that need to die. Amen. And these are all the other things that we have to die that we choose not to give up. Because it feels too good. Because we're wicked from Whoa. sin. So those things feel great. But don't worry. You know, I just ask for repentance and God will forgive me. A lie. Lie. From the pit of hell. Is lie hell. from the pit. Lies. No, no, no. Salvation is to change. If I'm still doing, if I'm still doing things, and it's been a long time I've been saved, and all of a sudden I went back to the things I used to do that I didn't do before when I found my first love, mm -hmm. something's alive again. Uh -huh. It really didn't die. Mm -hmm. I didn't crucify it. No. Mm -hmm. I didn't crucify it. I just put it to sleep. Oh, 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 oh. And a little bit of water brings it to life. What? See, because any dead seed, all it needs is a little water and there'll be life. Amen. Work it. A little water and there'll be life. Try with a plant. I promise you, if it dies, I have a little water and it'll come back to life. Lord, hammer. The resurrection of our weakness. The resurrections of our weakness, you can see it right before your eyes. When you're like, why is this thing coming back? Because it did not die. See, you would have bared fruit if it would have died. Come on. Amen. If it would have died. Hallelujah. If Jesus was a seed to the ground. He goes on the ground, he dies as an example of the scripture. And then he resurrects us to show that there's life after death. Amen. Proven fact that good or bad, this is an example of what happens. If you do not bury the things that are keeping you from being anointed. My God. See? It's the very thing that hinders your anointing that breaks the yoke. We have people who will be coming in this year because God promised they'll be coming. Yes. Our prodigals are already coming home, by the way. Yes. Amen. 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 And what I love the most about the prodigal story is this. They realized that they were in a pig pen all this time, and they're like, it's so much better in God's house. Hey, come on. <laughs> I'm done playing with the pigs. Yes. Pigs in a parlor, not in God's house. So they come back home. And what does God do? He restores them. And yes, yes. their identity. Yes. With a robe. With a ring. With the sandals. He restores them completely. Amen. Who do we think we are. To even be able to do that with people. 
We're not. Wow. No, 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 no. Wow. See, we're ministers of reconciliation. That's right. Our job is to reconcile That's right. the people to God. Right. <laughs> reconcile people in their relationships. Because God is all about relationship. Amen. So we reconcile them. But God is the one who does the work through them. Amen. Amen. God does the work through them. And we become real pushy. Lord Jesus. You're not saved quick enough. Oh, God. That's that self-righteousness. Oh, yeah. But we've been discipling for too long. Oh, They'll never get it. Self-righteousness. A lot of our people are coming back. Oh, we got to be leaders who are ready. Ready, ready. Anointed. In the love of Christ, displaying itself, the word says that our faith should shine the light of Christ to people. God's been talking to me about the light this past week. And he's like, the light will always overcome the darkness. You never fear. Amen. Don't give the darkness any room. Remember that my light shines the brightest and it casts out all darkness. Yes. And there is another false light, which we know that the angel of light comes. This is why discernment is important to reestablish yes. back in the church. Amen. Amen. Yes. Because you need to discern what light has entered in and what light is not. Yes. Yes. That's going to require much of us to be with the Father. So I know that right now God is calling many of our leaderships to come back into repentance. Repent for your lack of leading. Whoa. Repent for thinking that you were the one Whoa. that can Whoa. bring this move. Whoa. That you were the one that was called to save people. Last time I checked, I didn't get on this cross. Whoa. I didn't take the beatings on my back. Whoa. I didn't take the nails either. My God, and I, my God. Can, I be, can I be honest? I think one slap of that lash, I would have been done. Done. I don't, I don't know about 41. Jesus. I would have been done. Jesus. Because that's just, because that's how it is without God. Yeah. Right. Without the Lord, I can't do anything. <clears throat> God, Christ Jesus himself is our strength. Ooh. I wouldn't be able to get up on the cross without him. And the Lord, it's that season to pick up your cross the way you, we originally were created to pick it up. Shut up for self. Intimacy. Ooh. Finding out who God really is. Ooh. Not what we've learned through doctrine. Amen. Just one second. Not what we learned through doctrine for a minute. See, because we've learned a lot of our teachings through man, not saying that they're not anointed by God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but I've learned one thing. Mm -hmm. When they teach you something, go back and learn for yourself. Amen. Amen. Just Amen. test and see. Is it really real what they're saying? Because we have too much, too much watered down gospel that you're, that I'm going to say is going to kill you. Yes. It'll turn your fire off. It will yoke you in busyness your ministry would not even be it's not even ministry it turns into business come on uh -oh. you're right you're right uh -oh. and then we're like oh it's god's business it's only god's business when you're in his presence Amen. it's only god's business when he's with you Amen. no when he's really with you not saying, oh, he's with me. I know he's with me. No, no, no. You have to know, you have to know without a doubt this season that God is with you. Because Moses said, God, I will not go if you don't go with me. So if God's not there, you better not go. Hush, yeah. hush. Tell it, tell it, tell it. This is where we're going to start getting oh. our assignments right. That's right, that's right. Come on. I'm sorry I'm not supposed to be there. I don't see God's presence there for me. This is where I need to be this season. Yeah. This is my focus. This is where I have to be. 
yoke. And when the yoke comes, it's the busyness, it's the tiredness, it's the it's the I'm walking without rest. What does the Bible say about rest? It's where you find your salvation. If I don't feel the peace and the rest of God, then I have to question, is the Lord with me here? Or did I just send myself? Wow. We've talked about this, getting people off of certain walls yes. so that they could be on their wall so yes. we can become more efficient in the kingdom. Yes! Come on! Ah, no go. more wasting our time because it's precious. Yes! This is it. This is it. God forbid something happens to you tomorrow. How am I going to remember you? Whoa. What is your legacy? Shut up, what would your tombstone say? Oh, what is it going to say? Oh, God, oh, this God, person God. who's filled of faith and did whatever God oh, told them God, was going to say it's a shame. Oh, what will our tombstone say? And by the way, if our children are not carrying our legacy, we were never here. Shut up, oh. I'll say. Yes. We were never here. That's it. That's because it. Because there's no existence of my being here. That's it. Whoa. They are called to carry our legacy. Yes. I don't care what mountain you're going on as long as you're on the mountain of the Lord. Follow me because I'm doing what God's telling me. 
me to do. The Bible even says it. It says, look at your leaders. Lead by that example. How So, if we have people who are looking at us for an example, what example are you giving them? Because when you look at your people and you start complaining about their actions, their attitudes, you better look at yourself. If you're the one leading the flock. Amen. Because it's true. The pastor feeds the sheep. Amen. And we feed them. And you feed them. And you feed them. And you bring them back in order. And you bring correction. And you bring the discipline. And that's all good as long as you're doing what you're supposed to. We got it. But you, you tell me a few. But don't tell me the whole congregation is in the same disarray. I'm sorry. You can tell me you got a few little rebels. That's fine. Because I can understand rebellion in this mask, right? Amen, amen. But don't tell me the whole congregation is a mess. You guys are too comfortable in your mess. And if you know your brother's in a mess and you're okay with his mess, the Bible says go to your brother. And if you see him and say, you need to come next to him and you need to bring correction. Don't do this, brother. I hold you accountable. Where's the accountability? See, because just because some of us are not on the pulpit does not make you accountable. Oh, everybody has a ministry with Christ. You're still held accountable for your brother and sister. Isn't that in a normal household? Mom would slap both kids if one was out of order. Because both had to be in the same position. That's how it was in my house. Oh, you did it, but the both of you get punished. Why? Because everything must be in one accord. Amen. This is the one accord. Amen. This is the one accord, not the discord. It's the one accord. Where are you inside that you don't have the ability to tell your brother or sister you're out of order? Yes. My God is not a God that's out of order. He's not out of time. Everything comes right on time. He even comes up on the 11th hour, the hour that you need him. God is there in order. Hallelujah. Reverence. Reverence. No one has the fear of the Lord, not even the leaders anymore. Fear of the Lord means that you do not care that God sees the ugly, the dirty, and the mess. And you're okay with that. Somebody has to be in fear and trembling. If you don't get yourself right, you can spiritually die. It is biblical. Spiritual death comes to those who cannot come out of their inequity. It's a constant same old sin. Is God not powerful enough to break it? I don't think that's not the issue. I think the, power, the problem is this. We are not holding each other accountable and we're letting you do what you want and saying, oh, God will get him. That's not the attitude. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's why you don't have any love. Because the love of Christ sets us in order. If he does it for you, should he not do it for another? So if God puts my heart in order, how is it that I don't feel like God has put your heart in order? I don't know why we went there tonight. I really wanted to read the whole chapter. But the Lord is speaking. He's speaking. It's done. God is done. Oh, there's team. Like Sodom and Gomorrah, God was done. Okay. And I'm not saying that he's going to come and set off fire. You're going to get a fire. But the fire of the all-consuming God will show up. And those who have not been, those who have not been, will miss it. You'll miss it. It's already starting to happen when people are leaving the church. Churches are closing down. Closing down. Bank rock. No more members in their church. I wonder what. This says in Ezekiel, the glory of God has departed. We're all waiting for it to come back. 
If God will find one person that's so desperate for the truth, God, not, not, not the ideas or the plans that I put together, God. I just want to lay down and until I don't get all of you, I'm not getting up. Take me off the pulpit. Take me off the ministry. That's See, right. till I'm not ready, don't call upon me. That's right. Because until I don't feel the Lord upon me, then therefore I'm not able to do anything anyway. That's, right. That's it, right there. That's it, right there. We're in the pulpit dead. Ministers dead. False slating of the spirit. <laughs> Say it. False shivers. No one's feeling the presence of God. The elders, they weep. Our intercessors, the older women, who know what it is to be in God's presence, are weeping for the church. And you say, well, what's wrong with mother? She can't even begin to tell you where, what's wrong. Because you can see See, what people don't see, God gave special gifting to see in the spirit to particular people who he trusts. So when you have that particular gift, you can see that the spirit of God is really, listen, there is a spirit that is a false holy spirit that is manifesting itself rampant in the church. And everybody's like, that's the spirit of God. Wrong. That's the condolating spirit that came in from overseas. Thank you for inviting him in church. Because you invited every preacher and pastor because you didn't know where to look in America. So they come in with spirits from overseas that are not of God because they weren't delivered. Jesus! To come plant here in America. And then who suffers? We do. What is wrong with our own people? Keep the river running clean. Teach your people to teach. So that way when people come, we know this is not of God. I don't have a problem with that coming over. But I got a problem when I don't know what you're dabbling in overseas. Come on. I know my island. It's full of a cult. They dabble hard. They get possessed. Right in front of your eyes, different different spirits are coming in. My God. I know why it's. My God. Oh, well, we're from Christ. Yes, yeah, so the, the devil came and said the same thing. My God. Prove to me. The Bible says test the spirits. My God. What happens to testing the spirits? My oh, everybody who comes and saying they all think that they're from God, that's a lie. I don't believe it. My God. Show me your fruits. My God. That's it. Because that's the hour we're in. Show me your fruit. That's if you're it. not bearing fruit, then I have to question if you were really sent by God. And you know what? Let's pray on it. Let me get a good confirmation. Listen, just because we invite people doesn't mean you're going to have a breakout in church. The very breakout can happen with the people that's in there. Yes! That's right! You don't have to invite everybody thinking that one that's person right. is going to come in and that's break right. the church out. Jesus Christ is the only person we He's need to break one. out in the church. The only one. The we only need to one. dismantle the idols that we've yes. allowed in the church. Jesus. We place man as God. Jesus. We idol their position. Oh, forgive us. Oh, I'm sorry. You were greater than God. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Forgive us. We are a mess. I don't know what who we're fooling. I'm sorry. I won't pretend. Listen, I had a pretend in the world. I did a lot of that. Pretending somebody I wasn't, doing things I wasn't supposed to. When I came to Christ, Christ said, Truth. Truth is what sets you free. The truth is what's going to set our people free. The truth is going to set the church free. We need awakening. What does that mean? We need our people to wake up. You got people. Listen, we're not even in the church. We, we, we refuse to come into the church. I've been a tent all day. As long as I know God's allowed to be here, He can move, He can do whatever He wants. No man can come before Him and take His crown because that's what we're doing. We have the audacity to take the crown from God and wear it? Oh, God. 
the message. Yes, yes, it but it is. Yes, it is. But it is. Oh, oh, I don't know about you, but I am over. I am so over pretending. I'm over trying to be that goody two Christian and always trying to match up to somebody else. Competition is so overrated. Jealousy is so overrated. Listen, we are all equal. There's no one above another in heaven. Believe it. We're equal. Okay? You have grace to do that office. That's amazing. But we're equal. Work your grace. I'll work mine. And if we could just get into that position and break off competition. Some of us just like to come to a pulpit looking like kingdom, but we have no kingdom in us. No kingdom in us. I could wear all I want and make it look real good. Because we're good at doing that. We're good at looking great. You know, that's, a, that's something we picked up from the world where you fit into your makeup, but that doesn't work in God. See, because when you fake it till you make it, you never really made it. You faked it, so you don't even run. How, how much of a lie is that? And do yourself a favor and don't fall in your heart. Because Jeremiah says that the heart is deceitful. How would you even know? The heart is full of wickedness and de deceitful. Why would you follow that? I got to follow Christ. Christ has to lead me through the spirit. The spirit has to dictate my heart. And my heart has to dictate my mind. Because the battle in the field is our mind. We think too much of ourselves when we come in Christ. See, I knew I was a peasant when I wasn't saved. But when you come to understand who you are in Christ. Oh my God. I become a peacock. Check out my feathers. Because I'm okay to do this. Because you don't know where I came from. I just got my feathers back. And you're weary. Pride. That spirit of pride. Pride will come in and say it's my way or the highway. And if the pastor don't like it, that's too bad. Because God spoke to me. But I'm going to tell you how my God works. How our God works. If God spoke to me, he'll confirm it with the pastor. And the pastor will confirm it to me. Hey, I heard that God said this. And I say, you're absolutely right. Because it's confirmation. God speaks through confirmation. I, I should be confirming what he told you. That's it. So when we say those things, give you give you give the leadership some time to think about it. Like, let me pray on it. I mean, let me hear from God on this. Before you go off spreading your feathers. Let's just make sure pride's not involved. Let's make sure that God really called you to this. Because like I said, it's not a season to go without him. It's not a season to go without him. Father, I just thank you right now, God, for your word. Only you can perform your word. Lord, only you can release the anointing over your word. Father, you love us so much, God, that when correction is released, it is received because it was loved. Lord, I pray right now for the leaderships that they feel that they have nothing to repent from. They're, they're human just like everyone else. Everybody else falls short from the glory. At some point we have to realize we're not no longer in his glory. And come and repent. I know this city has a lot of repenting and leadership to do. But that's okay because God is knocking. He's knocking on the hearts. He's knocking on the church. He's knocking at his people. And if you do not hear, woe to you. Woe to you. Because when we do not obey the voice of the Father, that you are walking in the darkness of uh, the kingdom of Satan, not in the kingdom of God. 
And Lord, I ask that even those right now in this room, God, that you would unction them to rise this season and confront the things that are coming out of the darkness. The things that are being manifested and taught through darkness, through complete confusion. Let it be a season where we no longer allow confusion into the minds and hearts of our people, of your people, God. Forgive us for even compromising to even think that it was okay to let a little trickle of confusion in. Just because we didn't want to confront the one who's confused. Lord, I thank you, God. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you that you are, you are releasing us into the new us. Where it says, behold, and all things have passed away. It's because he's saying all your old ways will pass away. And this new creation in Christ will be hold its new. And so I speak 2020 over everyone. That we would walk in our destinated creation. That we would be the image of Christ. And whatever that is not, that's in us, that is not reflective to his image. Lord, help us. Help us because we need you now. We need you now, God. We need you now, now, Lord. We cannot wait. We need you like, like yesterday, Lord. I cannot emphasize enough how much we need you right now. We need you to help us in our brokenness to fix this mess. Help us, Lord. Give us visions and the night give us dreams give us spoken word in our mind God speak to us so clear this year that we would begin to help clean up the mess because that's what a remnant is set apart to bring correction where things have been made crooked we begin to break straight highway to holiness this season God Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>